Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. So those of you that are streamers, new and old, and people that are in the streaming community will probably know that Harris Hell has recently announced just two days ago that he's going to be moving to YouTube Gaming for all of his live streams and he will be stopping streaming on Twitch. I think it's really important to keep an open mind about the platforms that you stream on. So I'm not surprised that Harris Hell has been continually evaluating this thing for his own business. Harris has got a very successful stream and a very successful successful YouTube channel, but he is arguably not hitting his potential on Twitch where he could be streaming on YouTube gaming with a half million plus subscriber count. So I decided I'm going to do a video and include quite a few things in here. You're going to want to watch all of this video and the reasons are I'm going to first touch on the actual market share between YouTube gaming and Twitch and to a lesser extent Facebook gaming. I'll be using the latest report from Streamlabs and Stream Hatchet, so it'll include lots of 2020 data and into 2021. I'm going to make a comparison between Twitch and YouTube gaming specifically because I want to then go on to discuss some streamers that have moved across platforms, some YouTubers that have stayed on YouTube and other people that have started on Twitch and then eventually moved to YouTube gaming. So we're going to get into a discussion about specific YouTubers. However, one thing to bear in mind here is this is going to be very much focused on larger streamers and actually the vast majority of the people that are watching this video are going to be new streamers or fairly small to medium sized streamers. So you've got to take some of this data with a little bit of perspective and I'll ask you to do that throughout the video. Within the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Twitch's perspective with the Harris situation in reference to what Harris Heller says within his own announcement video, because I've got some interesting thoughts on how Twitch dealt with that, and I think that'd add value to this video and to you guys as streamers. I'm going to get into a little bit of contract talk, but we're not going to be getting too deep on this. I've got another video which goes into quite a lot of detail about contract talk, which I'll link in the description below. I'm essentially going to talk a little bit about why I think Harris might have missed a little bit of a trick with Twitch before he left. And we'll get into the details of that later in the video. Finally, we're just going to get into a little bit of a business talk, a little bit around diversifying your social media presence. And of course, we'll summarize with exactly my thoughts on the Harris Heller situation. Did he make the right move to ditch Twitch? As always, if you find this useful, feel free to hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you want to come say hi and hang out on my stream, I stream at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. And let's do this. Okay, so it's the 15th of April. Harris made the announcement just two days ago on the 13th of April. And we can see from Harris Heller's Twitch channel already that he's lost the tick. He is no longer a partner as of right now. So what he said in his video obviously has credibility, but I've got no reason to believe that Harris would not have credibility over those things. Harris has always been pretty frank and pretty pragmatic and pretty upfront and honest about his own situation. It gets quite into a lot of personal detail and that's always been a really endearing part of his channel and certainly a part of his channel that I really enjoy. It certainly provides a lot of insight as well. So he's lost the tick, but we can see here he's got 171,000 followers. And we just have to take into account briefly here the difference between followers on Twitch and subscribers on YouTube. Because Twitch is a much younger platform than YouTube, there simply aren't as many users. In fact, it's about 10 times fewer users on Twitch than there are on YouTube gaming. So first we have to talk a little bit about the differences between a follower on Twitch and the subscriber on YouTube. Now YouTube's been going for a lot longer than Twitch, and also it's a lot bigger and more established and of course it's in more broader video broadcasting so one follower on twitch is probably worth 10 or more subscribers on youtube from the point of view of just general critical mass we're not talking about monetary value here actually as it happens one subscriber on youtube is probably worth a lot less than one follower on twitch by the numbers we won't get into the detail of that so although it looks like he's only got 171,000 followers here actually that's probably like having half a million to a million followers if not more on youtube so He's actually got a lot of clout and certainly has a lot of influence because of the type of content that Harris Heller does. We can see Harris will be streaming on his own new channel here. It's his former blogging channel. He's not really pushed this channel very much. He's got 34,000 subscribers, but of course, we probably know him from the Alpha Gaming channel, which has half a million subscribers. Now, half a million subscribers in the YouTube world is actually not that much. You see a lot more channels, with a lot more subscribers than this. The thing to bear in mind here is that virtually all of those subscribers are likely to be some form of business person or or streamer or content creator and therefore the clout that those half million subscribers hold is probably a lot more than your average gaming YouTube channel that might have let's say two or three million subscribers anyone watching Harris Heller's channel is likely to be watching not just one or two videos they're going to be watching probably tens if not most of his videos so now I've had a little look at what actually Harris is going to be giving up and what he's going to be moving to I want to just quickly roll the clip of where Harris makes the announcement because there's some interesting things that he says uh, I'm pretty pumped. 
I'd like to explain why. I've actually been planning this move for a while. I think it was like five or six months ago when I first told Twitch that I didn't want my partnership contract to renew so that I could start streaming on YouTube. Oh, by the way, I don't think I've said that yet in this video. Yeah, I'm moving to YouTube. That's what this whole thing is about. It's not a joke, it's not a prank, it's not clickbait. I am moving my live stream from Twitch to YouTube. I will be streaming on youtube.com slash Harris Heller. Uh, link in the description below. Go subscribe, do all the things. And I want to make this very clear first thing in this video. This is not a move against Twitch. First of all, he confirms he's exclusively going to be moving to YouTube. He's not signed a deal with YouTube. It's been a personal decision. And he also did not have any, as far as we can see, contractual discussions in terms of exclusivity with Twitch. That's not information he gives away in the video. My opinion here is that there is a high chance that he would have at least tried to have that type of exclusivity conversation with Twitch. And at its minimum, we should be mindful that just by asking for his contract, that in contractual terms is like saying, I want to review my terms and conditions with you. This is a little bit different if you've got an affiliate contract or if you're a smaller partner. But anyone who's a larger partner can have custom negotiations with Twitch. And therefore, my feeling is that Harris was trying to have some form of custom discussion around his partner contract with Twitch. I get the feeling from what Harris is saying in his announcement video that Twitch basically simply did not want to entertain those discussions. It's quite an arrogant way of viewing things from Twitch's point of view. But I also understand Twitch too because they are the biggest player in the market it by far and we'll get into some of the numbers in a second there aren't many streaming options twitch are one of only a very small number of streaming options for people and in most cases they are pretty much the only option for any new streamer starting out and i'll talk a little bit more about that later as well but the first step in any contract negotiation is to ask for the contract if you don't already have it it's kind of naive that harris didn't have his contract he said that he made a request for the contract oh and as for the email that i mentioned earlier in this video and uh, in my tweet uh, it was a weird email, kind of a weird situation in general. For the last month or two now, we've been asking Twitch when my partnership contract was going to end, and they refused to tell us. They kept saying, if I want to know when it's going to end, I need to find my original partnership contract email and find it in there, which just frankly was not going to happen. My view is that here, the discussion should be more along the lines of, here is when my contract ends, or... My understanding is this is how the termination process works. My initial thought with this was that Harris decided that he wanted to have an exclusivity discussion with Twitch and not give up his Twitch landscape. Because let's face it, he's giving up a lot of extra revenue. He's talked a lot about his revenue before. It's estimated that he earns between 10 and 15,000 per month at least from Twitch. But more and more I've seen Harris cancel streams and push streams. And it's just felt a little bit like Harris's heart has not been in to Twitch as much as it used to be. And that's just my own personal opinion. I could be completely wrong about that but he does say that he was planning it for a long time and that he told twitch that he wanted to try streaming on youtube we can't just assume this is purely about harris trying to have a power play with twitch just to discuss an exclusivity deal for him to make more money my feeling is that harris was genuinely curious about the effects that youtube would have on his growth and his commercial landscape as well as of course you guys, the viewers. It's quite interesting to see the contrasting views from Harris Heller himself, because Harris has been a massive advocate of diversifying your business, of diversifying your content creation with the express view to de-risk your income and de-risk the probability that you will fail. You don't have to look far to see where Harris has actually said this advice. I'll roll a quick clip from one of his earlier videos. Which brings me to number two, which I've mentioned a handful of times, so I won't spend too much time on it, but diversify both your business and your income. Placing your eggs in multiple baskets guarantees that even if one or two die, you are totally fine. That's good advice. A in a previous video, but I make uh, my income, I think five or six different ways. I make money on YouTube ad revenue on these videos, uh, Twitch subs and bits, sponsorships and brand deals, Amazon associate links, stream beats, streams, and actually now, as of this week, uh, merch sales. Harris has definitely done that. He's had the YouTube channel, he's got stream beats, and he's got a number of other businesses. He talks in his video about owning eight different businesses. And of course, Twitch itself offers a dynamic 
on a different platform that allows him to create content and of course generate extra income but obviously by moving to YouTube gaming exclusively it's kind of going against his own advice however for Harris in the situation I think it makes good sense for him to plan to do that but my feeling still is that Harris was trying to cut some sort of deal with Twitch and or YouTube gaming with the view to just exploring those options with the platform and that essentially that process has backfired and later in the video I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about why Twitch may have done that and talk a little bit more about Twitch's incentives for doing that. So my initial thought was to be a little bit disappointed in Harris for going against his own advice however then I look at it more objectively and think well Harris's audience generally that is good advice for you guys to diversify your business, to diversify your social presence. It's just that for someone like Harris, it makes probably more sense for him to move to YouTube and centralize and rationalize some of his social presence to maximize the opportunity on those particular platforms. In this case, obviously YouTube. I wanted to just talk a little bit about the actual market share of each platform and get you some up-to-date information about this because it's important that you as a content creator yourself, as a streamer yourself, are informed about these things. Here we've got a quick graph just showing the growth with Twitch. As we can see, it's still very much a growing business. Some of these are projected. I think these last two are projected for 22 and 23. But as of 2021, there are 136 million viewers on Twitch, and that is pretty sizable. However, when we think about this in terms of the fact that it's still a fairly new form of media, it's still relatively in its infancy, the whole market in general, and also that YouTube has something like 1.5 or 2 billion, there's still a hell of a lot of runway for Twitch itself to grow, even though it's already grown to a high level. And that's reflecting reflected on the fact that this still is growing significantly. Clearly, COVID-19 would have had an effect on this. I want to just touch on an article here by the gaming industry, which references the Streamlabs and Stream Hatchet article that I mentioned earlier in the video. While all three platforms saw sizable audience increases in Q1 2021, Twitch saw a larger level of growth compared to last year. The streaming giant generated 6.3 billion hours watched in Q1 2021, a 97% year over year increase. Hours watched on YouTube gained from 1.1 1 billion to 1.4 billion just about keeping the platform in second place just for some perspective here we can also see that facebook gaming has 900 million hours watched in the last quarter of 2020 judging by this data if you are seriously considering moving to youtube gaming you definitely should also be seriously considering and take into account of facebook gaming as well obviously youtube has like the silver bullet to an extent in that they've got the massive overarching monopoly youtube video platform but then you could also argue the same type of thing for Twitch and their streaming prowess or Facebook and their social media prowess. So maybe those things counter each other out potentially. Here on Twitch tracker statistics, we see a little bit more month on month information. We could see that even through the pandemic, when the first wave started to die out and then increased again, Twitch has recovered pretty well month over month in terms of its concurrent viewers. You can also see that the number of channels has significantly increased over that period too. So what's really, really clear from the data is that all three streaming platforms are growing and all three platforms are growing at a high pace. Facebook is growing the quickest, but by actual person over person viewer increases and hours watched, Twitch is by far outpacing all of the other platforms. It's pretty clear that the acquisition of eyeballs towards the streaming market are leaning towards Twitch versus the other two. And I'm purely talking about the sheer volume of new people coming to Twitch versus YouTube gaming versus Facebook. But the main points that I'm going to make here is that overall the market itself is growing significantly and that all of the three leaders in that market are experiencing extreme growth at the moment. Why is this important? Well, it's important because you probably want to be wondering whether you should be making videos or should you be going out and doing something else. If you're considering a career in social media in some form, live streaming is a good option. However, there's another flip side to this story, which is the competition. And now we're going to take a quick look at the actual data surrounding the number of hours streamed by streamers in 2019 versus 2008. So as we can see here, 200 and 66 million, um, 225 and 255 in Q2, 3 and 4 versus 158, 149 and 145. It's almost doubled in 2020 over 2019. That's important because it shows that the market itself is still experiencing significant growth, albeit quite a lot of that was experienced via COVID-19 and people staying at home for longer. But obviously that's going to have a lasting effect on the streaming market. Just a note here, it does also include Mixer, rest in peace. And just for reference, Reference point here shows the total number of hours streamed versus 19 and 20. So yes, there are a lot more viewers, almost double the amount of viewers, but there are also a lot more hours streamed and your competition is stiffer, so to speak.
I'm going to link that article below, so if you want to dissect that data a little bit more and make more informed decisions, then feel free to do so. I would definitely encourage you to do so as well. That's the responsible thing to do, particularly if you're considering making a major change that may affect your income or maybe just stepping into this market. You may not seem like streaming to one platform versus the other is a big decision right now. Even if you've only got one, five or 15 viewers, the thing is, this is where you spend your time building what may later down the line become 100 viewers, 1,000 viewers, or maybe even for the select few tens of thousands of viewers. I'm actually going to talk briefly now about the actual money that you take home from these platforms because that's also a key part of the decision that you're going to make surrounding whether or not you stream on one platform versus another. Here's an interesting tweet from Devin Nash. It's quite a few months old now. It was January 22nd, but this is how much creators take home for every $100 earned. And as you can see, Twitch clearly is lagging behind in terms of the number of pounds it gives you for each pound that you earn, or in this case, dollars. I'm in the UK, yo. <laughs> That's not an insignificant margin. There's definitely room for Twitch to give more to its creators. But viewers of my channel seriously need to consider the prospect of starting up a Pornhub account and maybe creating some content on there. Only if you're over 18, of course, okay? Interestingly, Facebook's being extremely aggressive with the amount of money that it gives to its creators. $100 per $100 earned versus $50. That, to me, is absolutely insane. If this data is correct, and I will admit I've not fact-checked this, Devin Nash, I know to be a credible source. If that's true, Facebook are basically giving all of the earnings that the creators make to the creator. And that would be a smart move if they can afford to sustain that because that's going to allow them the ability to grow. So that's quite a key takeaway from this video that Facebook, you're likely to earn more money per pound, but the prospect for growth is higher on certainly Twitch and probably YouTube gaming as well. I talked briefly about some other things that relate to this as well. Harris Heller here mentions some of the unique selling points of YouTube. Discoverability on YouTube YouTube is notoriously good and discoverability on Twitch is notoriously bad. Harris Heller here points out that he hasn't spent a single dollar on promoting his YouTube channel and basically getting to know the algorithm will help you grow on YouTube, but it's a little bit more, shall we call it, muddied waters when it comes to Twitch. The other thing to bear in mind here is that with YouTube, you do have the option for shorts, you have the option for long form videos, short form videos, as well as the live streaming. So it definitely has a lot more strings to its bow. But the thing is with Twitch, it's so well established, it's already got the critical mass. And there are some cultural things that Twitch has really, really cracked and got right. The way that it works with emotes, emojis, sub tiers, the way that they handle clips and things like that all work very, very well on Twitch, but have not been very well replicated across YouTube gaming or Facebook gaming. There's a lot of things to consider here when you're taking into account whether or not you should stream on one, two or the third platform. I said I would touch briefly on actual streamers themselves and some of the things that have happened with streamers. We know that people like Courage JD. Dr. Disrespect, Valkyrie, all within the last year or so have moved over to YouTube gaming from Twitch. Dr. Disrespect was under duress, and it would not surprise me if the circumstances with Harris Heller were very similar with Dr. Disrespect. The difference for Dr. Disrespect was he was right in the middle of Mixer closing down, and therefore some of the negotiating power that he had was taken away mid-negotiation. Whereas with Harris Heller, Mixer isn't there, therefore watering down the number of platforms and reducing the need for Twitch to actually even engage in those exclusivity negotiations. Let's just touch briefly on Valkyrie's growth over YouTube. Just move over here. This is the result of her first year streaming on YouTube gaming. We can see there's consistent growth in terms of live watch time. She gets to 5 million here. In October, it's dropped down a little bit, but the average concurrence has grown considerably. My takeaway from this data when I read it, my personal takeaway was that actually broadcast hours is the most important factor here, okay? And that might seem re really weird. Obviously, average concurrent viewers seems like it should be the most important. But we see the biggest jumps in viewership by percentage have been on the months where she's broadcast the most. So here during this month, she went from five five and a half thousand to nearly 12,000 concurrents. That's more than 100% increase in concurrent viewers. And the following month, it was more than 100%, probably about 150% of concurrent viewers increase. These are on the months where she broadcast 166 and 181 hours hours. This to me just screams the harder that you work and the more consistent that you are with your content creation, the more likely it will be that you are successful. You're increasing your chances the more that you stream. However, there is a pivot point where actually you can stream too much and not be focusing on the creation of that content and the ideas for that content and you can suffer some burnout. So there is some balancing acts to do there, but it's not a surprise to me to see the more she has streamed, the more success she has experienced in terms of the growth on YouTube gaming.
It's at this point we start to think about wrapping up the video. I wanted to just talk a little bit about contract talks and how this will apply to most people watching these videos. Harris Heller's situation is a very unique situation. There's only a very small number of people that will be in the same situation as Harris, probably talking less than 50 or 100 people, that will have half a million views and have the option to go from a successful Twitch channel to a successful YouTube gaming channel. So just because Harris Heller has moved to YouTube gaming, that does not mean that you should also do the same. Of course, your situation all needs to be taken into account. And I would implore you to look at all of the facts, all of the data and make the decision that sits right with your gut. It looks like Harris Heller has made the right decision for himself. And it feels like maybe there was a niggling pain that made him want to take that jump long before he was kind of forced to do that. It's like his curiosity about the contract when discussing it with Twitch has actually been the dagger in the back that's made Twitch go, you know what, just leave, your, your contract is over. That's the way it looks from the outside in. But that's also the hallmark of a company that has great supplier power. They are the streaming supplier of choice for virtually all streamers in the market. They outnumber YouTube gaming and Facebook gaming, something like three or four to one. So it doesn't make sense to discount Twitch just because Harry Heller as an influencer has made that jump. I said I would talk a little bit about whether or not I thought Harris missed the trick here and although I think he's done the right thing to move to YouTube gaming and ultimately that is my opinion on this, I feel like it would have been very beneficial for Harris Heller to have done some streaming off contract on Twitch. It looks like he still has that option because his account is still live, he still has his followers there and he hasn't signed a deal with YouTube gaming yet. I'd be interested to see how Twitch reacts to him doing a stream on Twitch. To me, having had these internal discussions over email and getting the email that he talked about, feels like it would have been a really good thing for him to do, almost in an experimental way for the sake of viewers and information gathering and research, for him to do some more streams on Twitch out of contract just to see what happens. Having said that, I also feel like he'd already made his mind up to move to YouTube gaming and this really did give him the push needed to move to YouTube gaming. One thing's really clear though, Harris does leave the door open with Twitch and I think Twitch has left the door open to Harris Heller too. My feeling is that if things don't go very well on YouTube gaming for Harris, let's say for example he has some sort of disagreement with YouTube gaming, he would move back to Twitch in a similar way to, to what Ninja did with Mixer and Twitch. I do think that Twitch has missed a trick with Harris Heller, I really do. Um, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Twitch which I'm actually also a fan of YouTube gaming. It's my job here for you to be as unbiased as possible. I make videos on YouTube, I stream on Twitch, and I very much keep an open mind about both platforms. I think that's very important for the sake of this type of content that I deliver. But it's undisputed that Harris Heller is an influencer in this space, absolutely. Twitch had a chance and probably still have a chance to secure an exclusivity agreement with Harris Heller to get him on side and more to the point, get him on the platform. That holds a lot more power than probably the dollar value of securing that deal would. Having said that, Harris Heller has also been fairly scathing about Twitch in some of his more recent videos in the last six months. So it's possible that the commercial people at Twitch have basically looked at his content and said, we don't think this guy wants to be here. Let's just let him go and not waste the time, effort or money. And perhaps that is a good call on Twitch's part. But I also think that it would have been worth their while trying to come to the table with a deal for Harris. We don't know what happened behind closed doors. Maybe we'll never know. I guess we'll find out in a future video from Harris Heller or maybe not similar to Dr. Disrespect. Either way, Make sure you do diverse your business because you are not Harris Heller. You are not in the same situation as Dr. Disrespect or Courage JD or Valkyrie. Let me know what you think of Harris Heller's decision. Let me know of your own opinions on where you think you should be streaming and where we should be streaming. The saga continues. It remains to be seen how this will go in the next few years. One thing's for sure, Facebook gaming will be around in the next few years. Twitch will be around in the next few years and YouTube gaming will absolutely be around in the next few years. So those three platforms are a safe bet, that's for sure. As always, take care guys, cheerio.